Hello everyone, welcome back to another video here on Keep Running with BK and today we're going to talk about hydration. This is an important topic especially this time of year with summer right around the corner and especially when we're out on those long runs where we're running for an hour or two in the heat, the humidity and uh, we're wrestling with that idea of how much to drink and how often and how do I do that in a practical way? And that's what we're going to talk about today, right after this. So generally speaking, when we exercise or when we run, our bodies generate heat. And that is because it's using oxygen and breaking down glucose and it's producing energy so that we can actually perform in our exercise activity. And that generates heat within the body and so we sweat so that the fluids in our sweat can help release the heat buildup within our body so that the body temperature can stay cooled down and you add to that the idea of the sun beating down on you, the heat of summer, the humidity of summer uh, and we tend to sweat even more unless you're training at altitude or in areas of the world where perhaps you have dry heat such as out in the western United States or in the desert type setting where sometimes you sweat and it evaporates as soon as it uh, releases from your body you don't feel the sweat where here in the Midwest where it's so humid sometimes we just feel ugh, you know just drenched in it but in either case our body is using the fluids that we take in to help dissipate that body heat and over the course of our runs we can feel that sense of thirst or uh, maybe we start to be concerned about dehydration Certainly we've read about, we've seen a lot, we see a lot of advertisements on TV uh, and magazines and things like that around needing to replenish the fluids during exercise and the, uh, the promotion of um, hydration solutions, sports drinks, and things of those matters. And so the question comes, how much should I drink? And we're going to try to answer that question in today's video. But I think there's a general life principle here that I would caution just from years of experience um, and even research and reading that I've done. I think this applies not only in running when it comes to hydration, but in many areas of our lives. And that basic life principle is don't be ruled by fear. And what do I mean by that? We've been bombarded by this message um, that has produced a fear of dehydrating when we exercise. And yes, that is a concern. It isn't one that we should overcompensate for and then overhydrate. Over the past few decades, we've read about more cases of excessive hydration, which is just as dangerous, but even less understood. And that is in large part due to an overreaction to this fear of dehydration. Both are problematic. Um, both can cause problems for us as running. And so really the life principle here is not only to don't be ruled by fear, but all things in moderation is another great principle to live by. And that's keeping it basic. That's keeping it simple. Uh, the science behind it all is very complicated. Uh, the science behind it all um, uh, is really overwhelming and really not the focus of this video. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a scientist. This isn't a specialty of mine. Um, I've done a lot of reading over the years and I would even point to Tim Noakes' running lore where he does a pretty extensive job um, dedicating literally pages to what the body's doing and how this works and some of the ideas that are permeating out there in the running world around hydration over hydration and I think I would sum up his research with these same two principles don't be ruled by fear all things in moderation and what that basically boils down to is drink when you feel thirsty and when you drink 
I would sip or take it in small amounts. You don't need excessive amounts of fluids um, to stay sufficiently hydrated during exercise. Um, one of the recommendations he makes in his book is the average person should probably strive to replace 500 to 800 milliliters of fluids per hour. Um, I would say that's roughly two to two and a half cups uh, of fluids uh, per hour. And that's if you can tolerate it. Many runners, myself included over the years, when I've experimented and tried to drink more and hydrate more, because I generally describe myself as someone who probably doesn't hydrate a lot. I tend to be more of a minimalist. Um, as I've tried to figure out what works for me, sometimes I feel that sense of bloatedness. And when you feel bloated, what that is, is your body can only absorb so much fluid um, at a time. And what it can't absorb is what that sloshing around in our in intestines or that bloating feeling that we're having is that's unabsorbed fluids. And if we keep adding on to that, it just makes us very uncomfortable. Um, and you shouldn't get to that level. If you're getting to that level, then you're probably taking on more fluids than you need or that your body's able to absorb. So that's one measure that you can use. I think one of the things that runners do sometimes as well is they try to figure out how do I stay hydrated throughout the day so that when I get to my run, I'm sufficiently hydrated or when I get to race day um, and I'm getting ready to race that I'm sufficiently hydrated. And a number of studies have been done on this and basically the, the best test is if you have a light colored urine, that's the ideal level of hydration. If it's a darker color, then you're not hydrating enough. And if it's pretty much clear, then you're probably a little bit overhydrated and you're taking on more fluids than you really need to. So again, if I was to sum it up, when you feel thirsty, sip or take small amounts of fluids. Um, avoid that bloating feeling. Avoid over uh, hydrating. Um, don't force yourself to take on more than your body is telling you that uh, it, it can take on. And uh, you might need to experiment a little with it to figure out what really works for you. And so now what I'd like to do is kind of transition more to what are some of the practical ways that we can stay hydrated while we're running, especially on long runs. Usually our weekly runs, those shorter runs, we really don't need to carry uh, water um, or sports drink with us to stay hydrated. It's really on those long runs. And so how do we do that? And what I want to do is show you three examples um, of practical ways that I've used over the years and talk briefly about each one. And so the first one is, you know, you're taking, you know, a basic water bottle here. And uh, for, for years, especially when I was doing a lot of marathon training back in the day, I would wear a, a water belt. So you fill this with fluids, you know, you put it in here, it's got a little pocket available for you. You know, if you wanted to carry, you know, a gel or your keys or, or something of small nature, you can put that on here. You know, and then you can take this and you strap it around your waist. You know, it clicks in, and then really what you're doing here is you're you're trying to adjust the, you know, the tightness around it so it doesn't bounce around too much. Uh, but it's no not so tight that you just feel like it's 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 cutting off circulation, even though it's probably not. But you want to find that that right comfort level and that that right level of toughness. You know, but it fits there, and as you're running, it's real easy just to reach in the back, you know, drink your fluids, your hydration, and slip in here. You know, and with some practice, you can actually do that. I, I can do this with really without stopping, and, you know, a lot of people can do that. You know, but early on, if this is something new to you, sometimes you might feel like you need to get it, stop, walk um, while you drink, and then put it back in and then resume running. And that's totally fine, too. you got to figure out what is comfortable for you. Another uh, method that I've tried over the years, especially when, you know, I was getting interested in trail running, I would see a lot of pictures of trail runners, um, either in magazines or uh, online, when I was researching online, they would have one, uh, something like this, where it's a little, uh, I don't even know what you would call it, contraption, if you will, um, that holds a water bottle in here. It's usually got a zipper for, again, for keys or, you know, for a gel or something like that that you can do. And then it's got a, a thing here where you can slide your hand in, you know, and then tighten this down so you can run and carry your water bottle in your hand like this as you're going and, you know, drinking as you're going and kind of keep running. 
And this is nice. Um, it, you know, some people are uncomfortable with something around their waist that's bouncing around on the background. Uh, and this is something that you can keep in front of you. Um, this is also really nice um, for, for the trail. Um, uh, that's probably where I've used it the most. The third uh, example, and this is probably the one that's newest to me and the one that I'm still experimenting with and I've grown really comfortable with it. And at first I really didn't is um, more of a vest. And I think these have become quite popular uh, in, in recent years. At least I'm seeing it more when I'm out on the bike trail running or I'm out running and I see other runners. I'm seeing more and more people wearing something like this. So the running vest, you know, you have something like this. It's usually got a pouch in the back here. You can carry, you know, um, a rain jacket. Uh, YouTubers sometimes, well, I see who use these and they'll put their camera back here um, and it's on their back and then when they need it, they take it out and they can film and then put it back in there. Um, you can carry, you know, a lot of trail runners or ultra runners will use something like this because they can also carry some food in here or additional water bottles in here. Um, food, first aid, you know, all, all kinds of different things, gloves, you know, things in here um, that they can use for that. But generally speaking, this is something that you would put on. And if you've watched my videos, you've probably seen a number of videos where I'm actually wearing this. You come in, you can you can adjust this, you know, to fit properly. It's got pockets. You can put in here keys or, um, you know, your your gels, things like that. You can carry your phone. Um, that's one of the things I've really grown to like with this is I can carry my phone with me very easily on this Especially on long runs in case something's to happen. I feel comfortable. I can call that one of the things that I've been experimenting with is these soft flasks um, You know they're real soft here. You fill this up and then you can stuff these in the pockets here And as you're drinking the fluids and the volume of it goes down You can kind of continue to push it further and further in and eventually it's kind of out of the way and it's not bouncing or flopping around um, this took me a while to get used to, um, especially since, you know, the seal doesn't always seal all that right. So sometimes I feel like it's dripping and, you know, I just feel like I'm getting wet. Um, but over time, I've actually kind of grown to like these and prefer these soft flasks. Um, I really like them. They've got these nice little nozzles on here that took me a while to figure out how they worked. Um, that was part of the frustration early on, too. But you just kind of bite down on this and apply gentle pressure and you can drink in here as well and um, oftentimes what I'm doing I have a phone in one pocket one of these in the other and I'm carrying an extra one in the back especially on those two hour three hour runs um, on the trails when you're carrying more of your fluids and stuff like that with you when run when when one runs out throw it in the back pull out another one stick it in the pocket and then I can go um, the other thing that I've experimented with is more of the traditional bladder you can fill these bladders up and put it in the pouch in the back and they have a tube that can kind of come out and there's a little clip on here that you can hold on to you can bite down on it you know to drink as you need and it's just right there and it's just real convenient so um, this is what I started off with trying but uh, for me personally I felt like over time just the heat coming off my back it would start to heat up and I didn't want to you know and this would get kind of warm um, you know and Nothing like feeling thirsty and sipping on warm water or warm, warm sports drink. So it's something you have to experiment around and figure out what works for you. But uh, hopefully these are a few ideas and suggestions for you to consider um, as you run this summer, especially during your long runs and you want to stay hydrated and have something to sip on just to relieve that, uh, that, that sense of need for a uh, thirst quencher, but also just to stay hydrated. And uh, I really hope overall that you found this video helpful, give you some practical ideas and insights, um, and maybe demystify a little bit about this whole hydration need. It is important, but let's not blow it out of proportion. And um, let's use moderation as the guide just to stay safe this summer. Because as I always say, stay safe and train smart. And this is certainly one of those ways that we do that this summer. Um, if you've had any uh, practicals that you'd like to share uh, with other the listeners here about hydration, things that you've tried, found that worked for you or didn't work for you, feel free to leave uh, uh, that down in the comments. And uh, if you found value in this video, I appreciate you clicking the like button. And uh, I'd also just point out that I am on Twitter and I, I share some things on Twitter from here and there throughout the course of the week that I don't necessarily share here on the channel. 
or if you're on Strava, you can find me on Strava. You can find the link down in the show notes and uh, you can follow my, my training there. And uh, I'd love to uh, get to know you through those comments, through the linking up on social media. And as always, I really appreciate you checking out my videos. And uh, for now, that's all I've got. So until next time, stay safe, train smart, and keep running.